Welcome to the Coached Success Podcast. This podcast is aimed at connecting you with the ways top performers think about challenges so that you can adapt your thinking accordingly and live your version of Ultra Extraordinary. So today on the call, we have Maurice Page. Maurice, how are you doing? I'm very well, my friend yourself. I'm excellent. Thank you for agreeing to be in the podcast. Great. I'm very honored to be here, my man. You're welcome. Maurice, do you want to tell us who is Maurice Page? Well, you see, me, I'm a, I'm a simple, humble guy that came from a, from a humble beginning in a mm-hmm. small town called Heidelberg in Cape Town. Grew up there most of my life and then before I moved to Cape Town. You know, I'm just a simple guy, I believe. So you mentioned there that you had humble upbringings. You want to speak a bit about yes. that? This is this is always a topic that I never want to discuss. But anyway, mm-hmm. so I, I was basically brought up uh, with uh, my great grandma, you know, with mm-hmm. uh, pension money. I never had anything like as in nothing, nothing. Not that I have anything right now, mm-hmm. but um, I know what 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 tough life is. I know what what it is to have nothing for two or three days. I know what it's like to eat. Um, sand so you can just have a little bit of protein yeah. in your body but aside from that you know uh, what I can say and what I live by today is that my great grandma always told me that you know never let anything get you down and be mm-hmm. a survivor and that's what you are planted for and uh, so as much as all those hard upbringing you know there was there was life there was happiness within all of that and that that's mm-hmm. from the from the old lady smile that I got you know and and her hard-headedness for one to not give up in whatever it is that we are going through. You know, she always put up that thing. So I took, I took away from that, you know, and what she, what she taught me how to survive in life. And that's what the simple things around us, how to make a fire, how to cut wood, you know, to chop wood, how to feed your animals, how to plant, you know, how mm-hmm. to do all of those things. And I think that that is still within me in today's time. Mm-hmm. That's why I can't say that I, I struggle because she made me reach that time already with all of those things. And I take that with me on an everyday basis till still today. I love that. In spite of the, the upbringing that you had growing up where you said there were days you didn't have, you mm-hmm. still consider yourself wealthy because of the wealth of knowledge that you of actually course. gained from your grandmother. The fact that she yeah. taught you to be resourceful and she also taught you resilience. So these yeah. are important characteristics. And sometimes we overlook this when we go through our day-to-day lives and think, why did this mm-hmm. have to be so hard and difficult? But that actually contributed mm-hmm. to making you the person yeah. you are today. So do you want to tell us a bit about yeah. how that actually propelled you to actually go into to acting? How did you get into acting? I was never supposed to be an actor, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. It was not in my mind to go and study for it. Never in my mind to even step on stage or... Think about TV for that matter, you Mm -hmm. know, just because of, I'm going to mention it again, the environment and uh, where I'm coming from. So there was not that little bit of hope of even seeing myself being on Mm -hmm. TV or out of Heidelberg or out of Cape Town. All I wanted to do was just play rugby. Okay. So that was my thing. I was, I was good at it. Mm -hmm. I want to believe I was very good at it in athletics. So those are the two sports elements that I think I would have participated in a for a very long time, you know, and would have done well and represented maybe South Africa for that matter in, in one of those two things. And then this one year, grade seven, yes. Mm-hmm. So the community, they had a drama school outside of, out of, uh, out of school, but they used the school kids to participate in whatever projects they were running for whatever festivals. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were busy with already with, with a play at a time. And this one guy, he got sick a week before the competition. And he literally lost his voice. So there was no way that he could even play that that Saturday in the competition, you know? That happened on Monday. And then I was looking for someone at school to stand in this guy's character. And this character, if you remember Steve Urkel, you know, very quirky, the character was something like that. And and they came to me and they asked me, and and I told them, there's no way. I don't even know how to learn lines. I don't know how to act. How can you put me on the stage, first of all? And then second of all, you want to take me to a festival to go and perform in a competition. There's no way that I can do it in a week's time. Yes. And uh, that afternoon, 
the project manager and the principal of the school went to, to my great grandma. Now nobody passes my great grandma. If she says it's like that, then it's like that. You know, she was that type of person in the community. And um, so she did it. She convinced me to do it. That Monday afternoon, I was in rehearsal. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we left for Oatsworm. And then, uh, you know, I stepped on stage and I won Best Supporting Acting. And I was like, what? Well, the, first of all, the people gave me a standing ovation. And that's like, no ways. People actually love the stuff that makes you laugh. I belong here. I should stay here. <laughs> and, you know, I never look back. And it's been 18 years now. Ever since then, I never stopped doing the, the school projects, you know, the, the educational projects. I'm always involved in it in the community projects and all of that stuff, especially when it, goes to, when it comes to acting. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I keep my involvement in it. So that's basically how it started, man. And I am still here today. Awesome story. First of all, your, your great grandmother was such a strong woman. Like you said, nothing passes her. If she says yes, yeah. you need to follow and abide. <laughs> yes. But also the story that you have in, in terms of it, all you want to do is play some sport. And then you found yourself in this position or this opportunity that came before you. You know, sometimes in life, we, we have these moments where we get certain opportunities, but we're not sure what to make of it or where it can take us. And it just shows that by simply just going with it, even though you were forced to do it, it actually paved a pathway for you and your career and your future. So yeah. Yes. And how old were you back then? Man, I was young. I was about 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So that is pretty young. And then tell me, how old were you when you initially started getting into acting or on the, like TV? I was, I was 19, 20, mm -hmm. 19, 20. I got a bit of opportunity for after school that um, the community came together and the person that actually ran the, the drama school, they put a bit of money together for me to go and study. Mm -hmm. And with uh, the hope that I would get in, uh, like, a, like a bus to go and study further in Pretoria at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got the opportunity to go to Pretoria, mm -hmm. but then I had to have like 50% of what, what was needed. And I didn't have it. And I told myself, okay, I can't put this pressure on my grandma. Because at the time, my great-grandma passed away just the year before that. So now I'm on the shoulders of my grandma. And she's got a lot more responsibilities, you know. And I didn't want to put that on her shoulders. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to start working, man. I'm just going to see what I can do. And I got myself an agent. That following year, I joined the agency. As soon as I went and joined them, they put me somewhere in an in a, in a audition and a casting audition for something. And the afternoon, four o'clock, I got the call. I said, I got the job. So I started at the bottom and I started, you know, doing the groundworks as well. Ever since then, I can honestly say, thank you, God. Mm -hmm. I have never stopped working. There was not a day where I was sitting and thinking, oh my word, where's my next bread going to come from? And all of it, you know, it was always work for me. If I step out of the one thing, I step into another thing. So I was very blessed in that matter. Yes. And I say it until today. It, it was put out for me and the timing was for me perfect. And the reason for all of that is, I think, is because it's a way I was brought up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I apply that to even the acting that I was doing at the time, while still today, that I know that I would never had to panic. You know, okay. the little bit that I get doesn't matter how big the parties that I have to do. I make the best of it. I take it as if it's the lead. I take it as if it's a Hollywood, like I think today, like it's a Hollywood movie. Mm -hmm. I think that big of everything that I do, it doesn't matter how small it is. Okay. And that's just something that I know that my grandma has put in me and I had to put it out for the universe. That's really awesome. You say you go all in on everything you do. And it was basically divine intervention that allowed you to be working, like you say, nonstop since you got your first gig. So as somebody who's freshly out of the teenage years, getting into the spotlight, how do you think that affected your ego? You know, this question came up for many years. I, I can't say honestly that there was never an ego mm -hmm. because of my humble, uh, humble upbringing, you know. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that I didn't know what TV was because I never, we didn't have a TV at the time. I didn't have anyone that I spy. At the time when I, we got a TV, the small black and white TV, there was only two people on my screen, Kevin Smith and Jan, uh, Johan, Johan Stemmet. Mm -hmm. It was, there was nothing for me to deal. For me, it was more like a shock to my body mm -hmm. and my whole being. 
because now when people start to recognize and start talking about you, you don't know how to deal with it. So you shy away. And that was my personality. Mm -hmm. I shy away from those things. So all I want to do is just act. Okay. Even up until the day besides directing. If you are enjoying this episode and would like some practical tips that you can use daily to thrive, then head over to coachedsuccess.com forward slash thrive and download our five daily tips to thrive. That is coachedsuccess.com forward slash thrive. Now let's get back to the episode. Um, for somebody who's never acted before, because obviously you're taking on a persona of this individual, this character. How do you yeah. separate that from who you are as, an, as a person outside of the, the cameras? Obviously, they, they write a story for your type of character, right? And those are the stories that basically the make-believe stories, mm -hmm. but it's always 50-50 of you and that character that always have to come together to actually tell the story. When I tell a story from another person's perspective, that means it needs to stay there. I can't carry and drag that same energy with me home because that means I'm not stepping out of that character. I don't give myself time to live my life as Maurice and not mm -hmm. Calvin at a time. So I've, I've, I've studied and learned that it's two people. They're living a total two different lives. So I had this thing since theater stage. Um, if I'm done on stage, I leave that energy there. Okay. Because sometimes we play characters that kind of sit with you and you don't know how to deal with it. And that's how it causes the depression and you mm -hmm. are staying uh, stress and all of that stuff, you know. So I saw that luckily a lot of times before. And that's how I kind of developed that thing for me. As soon as I'm stepping off stage away from the camera, I'm myself. Okay. I need to learn to separate the two. Okay. So there's two things I want to touch on based on that. First of all, you're able to disassociate yourself from this persona or this character. Is there a particular yeah. practice that you utilize, that you use after or before going into character? A lot of actors are different. They do a lot of uh, warm-ups. They do mm -hmm. the meditation thing. I'm one of those that some people would say natural actors. You know, mm -hmm. when I read my scripts, I get into it immediately. I okay. put myself mentally in that place. Mm -hmm. And I took myself and I take myself mentally out of it as well. Yes, when I studied, yes, when I was still early stages of my theater life, we used to prep. You, you need mm -hmm. to warm up, you know, you need to do voice warm up, body warm up and all of those meditation things. But people still until today in their professional lives, they still do that because it mm -hmm. works for them. Uh, for me, it's just, an, it's just uh, you know, using more time that I could have done something else. Mm -hmm. And then another thing, Maurice, you mentioned about uh, just the perspective that you're taking when you are going into character or becoming that character. So tell me a bit about how this perspective taken has served you in real life outside of acting, for example. Yeah, definitely. You know, there was a few incidents, bad and good. Yet again, I was never afraid to shy away from it. It's either I face it or I just let go. But I wouldn't let anything affect my well-being for being a person that I am. That's what I like about myself, that I know myself so good that I know exactly that whatever I face, mm -hmm. I will either handle it to the best of my ability and overcome it and move forward and use it for my next venture or my next step into life. That's beautiful. Just using this fuel and continuously growing. And then I see yeah. you very much into fitness as well. Tell me a bit about how this aligns with, with you as an actor, you in your career or you in your real life in life. In general it's very important it's very important nutrition and fitness uh, it's very important for you as an actor because you know sometimes depending on how how busy you are as an actor you need to have not only the the mental mentally fitness but you also need to be physical because sometimes especially in the direction that i want to go into is action comedy because i want to do stunts and all of that stuff and i always told myself in order for me to do that i need to start early with my body i need to work it up to a certain point where i know once i get that opportunity that I am ready. I don't have to go back and start working then on it. I know now already what I want to do. So I'm starting to work on my body now. And that's how I got into fitness. And through that, I've done a whole lot of things. I've done bodybuilding. I've done all kinds of challenges, you know, just to get my body into that kind of hard work and suffer. So mm -hmm. once I have to get to that really hard work, my body knows it and I knows how to adapt like what it is now. 
mm-hmm. what you mentioned now, it's about adapting, putting yourself in a challenging situation beforehand, forcing yeah. your body to adapt to the suffering, to the pain. So when yeah, it's almost like point, a military, military training for a style. Exactly. So when you reach that point, your body is competent, is yes. able to handle that. Okay. And then tell me a bit about the challenges that you personally face within your career or your personal life. And then again, I can't really say, as I've, I've been really, 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 when I say this, I mean it, I've been blessed not to have any kind of challenges in terms of where I'm going to work next in my career. I've been so blessed and honored that wherever I was working, I leave always some trail or trace for a relationship, whether it is the next year or two years or three years down the line. So whenever I'm needed or I need some other stuff, from whoever, then it's always that relationship that I can fall back onto and say, but listen, my man, can we do this? Or can we do this and this and mm-hmm. this? There's always that ongoing chain that I started to build myself in my early stages of my career that I can say, not in the industry. Yes, we're facing challenges because there's all sorts of challenges within any industry. Mm-hmm. But that's other things that makes you more stronger within. Because yes. if I didn't face it, if it didn't make me strong, I would have been out of it now. But those are the things that I know. It's not close to how I grew up. Mm-hmm. So it can't get me down. I face it. If I can't work with it, I just move on. You know, I'm working. I know I have a job. That's my blessing. That's what keeps me going. It might not be the best. It might not be the biggest, but it, it feeds me, you know, mm-hmm. purposely. It feeds me soulful. It feeds me the energy that I need to give to my grandma, to my mother and my brothers, you know, and which is the most important people in my life right now. So yeah, the challenges that we face in the industry, I don't take them lightly, but you know, they're there. But what I like now, you just mentioned is you made a reference to your childhood and you said that none of the obstacles were as bad as that where you came from. When you compare in that, you know that you are able to show up and you're able to conquer this. And that, yeah. that is powerful because it just shows that little difficulty that you had I mean, early years actually gave you the resilience. It actually built you up to be this guy that's able to withstand many of the hardships that many other people would not be able to face. And then tell me about how is Corona impacting you personally? Very positive. Mm -hmm. I got to spend a lot of time with my family. Mm -hmm. I got to spend a lot of time with me reflecting on what's really important in my life. Because before Corona, I had this busy life. There's never time for anything. You know, time is put out for everything. As soon as Corona arrived, you are immediately forced to stay 24 hours in your house. And then you get to breathe. You get to look at things differently because what we have done before and what I have to do now is basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. I just spend more time with me now and I'm much more powerful now than what I was before. Before, I always used to think like, no, I have to, I have to because this, I need to do this time, this, I need to do this time, I have to, I have to. Mm -hmm. Now I can sit back and say, no, but I, I can actually, I can breathe, I can relax. I'm healthy, much more healthier than what I was. I'm rested. I don't have this problem of not sleeping anymore. And I still do what I was was doing before, Mm -hmm. but just in a much more controlled environment and self-esteem. And that's a beautiful thing for me. And I've spent a lot of time with my family as well. And I'm not spending a lot of money as well also. All those things where you think like, you know, you only need the necessary. You only need that to survive. All the other stuff that we add as human beings, that is just the world stuff, you know, mm-hmm. it's, and it's not necessary. And that's what I've realized. Yeah. Once again, that speaks power to your perspective that you're able to take because obviously in any situation, there are multiple perspectives and it shows that you are able to find the beauty in every single thing. And that is powerful because that allowed you to reset and realign yeah. with what is really important to you and your future instead of yes. just being consumed and being reactive to everything that's happening around you. So amazing. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah. As we conclude, tell me, what, what is next for you? Yeah, man, what's next for me is that like, I want to step outside of acting now. I want to move mm-hmm. into directing. Fight to Fame is actually giving me opportunity to actually fulfill my dreams behind the camera, giving me the time, you know, to create content, to direct mm-hmm. it, to play in it, which is the stuff that I'm much more driven by now in my stage of life. So hopefully in the next year or two, I can do what I want to do, and that's directing my own stuff, my own short films, play in more movies. I just want to step away from from soap, Mm -hmm. but I want to start doing like films, you know, action, comedies and stuff like that. I want to push my acting skills a bit further now and I think it's time for it. Awesome. I wish you well on the next journey.
Thank Thanks you. so much for taking the time out of your day to chat to me and share your journey with us. You're welcome, my brother. Thank you very much for the opportunity, man. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. This is a weekly podcast. So tune in every Monday to get your dose of inspiration that will help guide you in designing your version of an extraordinary life. This is Kyle Daniels, wishing you an amazing day. Stay winning.